The Keep Smiling for Abby Fund hosted a day at the Derby on the day of the Kentucky Derby. The event featured Derby Squares, raffles, a silent auction, and more. The event raised around $30,000 in the fight against anaphylaxis. Stephen Benford, father of Abby Benford, who passed away from an anaphylactic reaction at the age of 15, announced that $25,021 will be a gift commitment to the Weiss Institute to fund Project Abby a project to develop an anaphylaxis auto-detection and therapeutic device. The concept marinated a little bit for a few months. Ben then introduced us to some researchers at the Wies Institute. They're here today, right over there. I think they're still standing there. Um, the Wies Institute met with us three times in the last six months. They, they listened to our case, they listened to our story, and, and they, they brainstormed with us on how we could solve this problem with technology. It, it's really an inspiring group of people. If you go and talk to them, you sit across the table. These are really smart people that, that know how to solve problems. And when they look across the table and they can solve a problem like this, they get really into it. The best news of all is they've listened to us and, and they've started a project. Two weeks ago they started a project to create, this is a mouthful, an anaphylaxis auto detection and therapeutic device. This is a real project at a real lab in Boston and these are the guys that are going to do it. <laughs> I alluded to the numbers earlier, but they're, they're, they're staggering. 15 million people are at risk of anaphylaxis. Two kids in every classroom, one in 20 Americans are at risk of anaphylaxis. Medicine, bee stings, food, latex, nothing like this exists. These guys are going to solve this problem. Today, Keep Smiling for Abby is, is very excited to announce a gift commitment of $25,021 to the Beast Institute to fund this project. <laughs> Uh, this, this time of year is pretty special for me because six years ago to this day I walked into the Wies Institute and I said, where is it? There was nothing there. There was a bunch of money in the bank and there was empty lab benches and my boss said, well, you've got to build this out. So I said, and she said, and this is one of your first projects which was a technology that we developed for infant apnea which has many similar characteristics to what we're doing here early detection and a therapeutic intervention. And as I'm looking across these empty lab benches, the panic sets in, and I said, oh, I gotta get some help. So one of the first calls I made was to John Osborne uh, to, to join our team, and he said no. Um, <laughs> but I was dating at the time, and I was used to hearing no a lot, so <laughs> I just kept at it, and a year and a half later, he said yes and we've been a pretty dynamic team. We lead the medical group, which is one of six groups at the Wies Institute. You can check out the website, wies.harvard.edu. One of the special things about the Wies is it's not just a bunch of propeller heads at Harvard or MIT or another academic institution, and please don't take offense if you've gone to any of those academic institutions, <laughs> but it's, it's a translational institute. It's a collaborative institute. You misspoke with one little word when you're up there that said we were going to solve this. No, we are going to tackle this issue. That's what the collaborative nature of the, the Wies Institute is all about. So we collaborate with over 10 institutions, including Children's Hospital. We're going to tackle this problem together. Platform, it's a bit of a mouthful. Basically, we build devices that sense changes in the body. Uh, we can build algorithms that sense something bad that's going to happen and then intervene to prevent that from happening. Uh, traditional medicine has often been reactive, so how do, we, how do we fix something that's occurred or how do we heal people after the fact? Ideally, we should be preventing those things from happening, and, and that's what our goal is. So we are going to be launching Project Abby. Our first step will be to work with Children's Hospital to monitor patients who are admitted to the hospital presenting with symptoms uh, like anaphylaxis or with anaphylaxis, and we can monitor them and use that as, as developing knowledge towards building our device. Our end goal will be a, a wearable device, something if you could envision like a, uh, maybe a, something you wear on your belt or a, a chest strap or maybe a, uh, some kind of uh, wristband or sensors on or inside your body, something that's continuously monitoring your body. And when it senses the onset, the early onset of anaphylaxis, we could then auto-inject a dose of epinephrine to save lives.